everyone happy afternoon a very good afternoon i hope and i believe all of you are doing well yes guys so glad to see you all here i can see quite a few familiar names and some new names as well so happy afternoon era cotton shoes formal pants yes aruna ha hello so i'm sure all of you know our today's topic of discussion is the must know imaging science in chest x-ray and hrct chest all right so we are going to uh, quickly see at the uh, various signs which are important for our exam plus some extra edge as well good afternoon venkat good afternoon wonder woman all right so before i start with the session if you have you know any queries related to your preparation or for that matter any queries please feel free to ask till then i'll grab the uh, pdf as well my voice is breaking is it uh, is it true for everyone wonder woman is saying my voice is breaking or for others it's fine okay so thankfully for others it's good so wonder woman maybe we need to check the connectivity or your end all right so uh, no queries guys regarding your preparation so everything is going very fine yes how can we remember everything Ex no it's uh, not at all um, uh, you know you as i say you don't have ek minute mujhe time do ha huh? yes so yes that means uh, 2020 has been a year of uncertainty the year which which very much defines that you know life is very very unpredictable you never know what is going to happen when so it is evidence uh, this year has been an evidence to it that life is very much unpredictable so we all should be ready to face whatever comes in our way uh, right so same is true for you guys i can uh, totally understand what you all must be going through the dates not being announced and preparing i know when you don't know the exam dates you tend to get laid back you know you don't get that momentum to study i totally totally understand all of that but at the same time we also need to remember as i always tell you ki every single moment not even a day every day to hey hey but every single moment is very important for you so make it like you've got enough 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 time to prepare for this exam so make sure that you get your dream branch and not only your dream branch but in your dream college so make sure that you make the best of this opportunity the extended time that you have got right so so new year resolutions yes we are going to discuss in tomorrow's session ki what should be a new year uh, resolution for the neat pg aspirants right so together we will decide our resolutions in the tomorrow session right so uh, ayushi can't complete things on time procrastinating a lot so we all know where are we making mistakes but the only thing we are not doing is working on those mistakes right so uh, we know that once who makes the same mistakes again and again uh is not a wise person a wise person is someone who does not make mistakes himself but learns from the mistakes of others you know that is what is a really wise person and i'm sure we all you all are wise so please do not do that always keep that in mind you know uh, sometimes fear is important so imagine karo ki agar result jab aa raha hai you're getting your results of whatever exam you're applying for neat pg hai fmg hai jo bhi hai and then you get to know ki you know you have not got the rank which you expected and uh, so imagine how bad you will feel about it and imagine how bad it would be to again do all the 19 subjects for one more year and you don't know again that there's unpredictability of the pattern the next year whether it's going to be neat as it is now or it's going to be next so remember all of that on the other hand to feel good you know to feel motivated imagine again the result day 
your name being in the top list and uh, you know you would get such a happy happy feeling and you would be so happy with yourself for the entire life so remember your pg branch is something which stays with you forever you know uh, the college still you can compromise but the branch i would say you cannot compromise on that so after the results none of you i don't want any one of you to feel that yaar thoda sa zyada pad liya hota to i would have got my branch so i don't want any one of you to feel that and i want all of you ki you know to have that option ki uh, you should get such a rank ki aapko jo branch chahiye aapko mile the choice is left up to you not up to your rank okay the choice is left up to you to take whatever branch you want all branches should be open for you so target for that rank okay target for that rank and as i always tell if someone else can do it you too can you also have all the potential in you just that you need to realize that you need to awaken that agar wo soya hua hai to usko jaga do and jitna time hai abhi march mein agar exam hai you have enough time even if you put your 100% now i'm sure you all would be in the top list like you know you all guys are amazing i've been seeing all of you since long you are so sincere so hard working right so just give yourself a little more push and you shall be through it okay so let us start with our today's session i think hum bahut bhashan ho gaya start karte hain and i hope all of you guys are also attending this uh, uh the 29 december the session the course that we have started the target next 2022 batch right as i told you just see the schedule if you are not very confident in any of the subject just cover that subject from that particular batch and that should suffice for your exam all right and uh, start karte hain first wale theek hai all right so this is it uh tell me what sign do you see here anyone very good so chandan is right this is uh, this is hamptons chandan what is it is it hamptons line or is it hamptons hum is it hamptons line or hamptons hum what is the sign we are looking at the most important signs in your chest radiology right so this is the hamptons hum all right this is the hamptons hum all right isme what do we see and where do we see hamptons hum we all know it is seen in pulmonary embolism so guys pulmonary embolism is a topic which you all should be very very well prepared from you know whatever medicine pharmacology matlab a patient of pulmonary embolism what will be the symptoms how will you diagnose how will you manage all of it is important okay so this is a hamptons hum so you see this triangular opacity you see this triangular opacity here which is broad based towards the pleura and it has the apex here which is towards the hilum this is how a classical infarct in the lung will look like it will be broad based towards the pleura periphery or either it will converge theek hai yahi agar left lung mein hoga to ye aisa hoga aur idhar aayega hilum ke paas so this is classically a pulmonary infarct we know infarct occurs when there's no blood supply so this is pulmonary embolism right pulmonary embolism where do we see hamptons line where do we see hamptons line yes so hamptons line line is rhyming with benign so hamptons line is seen in benign gastric ulcer it is seen in benign gastric ulcer okay so that was hamptons hum well, what is this investigation what is this investigation ct yeah it's a non contrast ct or is it a contrast ct very good dr ajay so this is a contrast enhanced ct why is it a ct scan so we will cover you know we will be catering to everyone who's present here in the class some of you might know the signs you might know all the investigations some students might be new so i would uh, you know concentrate on all of you who are present here so you have the white bone you have the white bone that's the vertebra white bone is ct scan you have the white vessel here which is the descending aorta that's the aorta so you have white bone ct scan you have white vessel so contrast so it is a contrast enhanced ct in this contrast enhanced ct where do you see the pathology on the right side or the left side 
where do you see the pathology what side appears abnormal on the right side right so again it's a triangular shape area which you see here this is a ct correlate ct correlate of your hampton's hump it is a ct correlate so tamanna good guess it could be sequestration but how will you diagnose sequestration tamanna on uh, imaging how do we diagnose sequestration sequestration right so sequestration i want all of your doubts to be cleared as well sequestration yes is a part of a lung which is sequestered and it is supplied by aorta or a branch of it that is why you need to do a angiogram or a ct angiogram you would look for the blood supply from the aorta so in this particular image am i seeing that a branch of the aorta is coming like this and supplying this part no so that is why in this one particular image i cannot diagnose this as sequestration but what do we see is this is a triangular area of opacity again brought towards the pleura and it is converging here the other important thing that we see here in the ct if you notice very carefully these are the vessels okay these are the vessels which are filled with contrast this particular vessel just have a look at this particular vessel and compare it with this vessel do you see a difference in the color of two vessels there is a difference in the color of two vessels here i mark these vessels here right so this one is not becoming white like this one is becoming white this is white this is white this is not becoming white so when in a contrast scan your vessel is not becoming white while the rest of the vessels are becoming white then what does it indicate what does that indicate right so basically there is a thrombus theek hai thrombus ho sakta hai ya embolus ho sakta hai basically something occluding the vessel right something occluding the vessel so this is a embolus in the pulmonary artery ka branch that is why in the corresponding area you see the infarct that is the hampton's hump okay that is the hampton's hump is that clear with everyone so this is the ct correlate of your hampton's hump this is the ct correlate of your hampton's hump all right so hampton's hump is a hump like this which is an infarct uh, what do we see in the what do we see shreya is asking what do we see in x ray for sequestration so uh, shreya nahi shreya sorry shreya uh, tell me what how do the patients of sequestration generally present with a very important clinical scenario what is the clinical presentation of the patients who have sequestration no not dyspnea why will it cause dyspnea sequestration is just a part of a lung which is sequestered your rest of the lungs are absolutely normal your rest of the lungs are absolutely normal so it will not cause dyspnea dyspnea you will have when there is something massive happening so these uh, patients generally present with yes abscess that is basically recurrent infections you have recurrent infections that is what the patient present with it's a sequestered lung so there is problem with all the you know the blood supply the lymphatic say sab garbad hota hai so they present the most common clinical presentation is recurrent infections recurrent fever cough pneumonia wo sab hota hai recurrent infections is a very very important history so uh, and generally they present in your you know adolescent age so you will have 10 year old or something like that who presents with recurrent pneumonias then you do a ct scan you see that the branch of aorta is supplying you diagnose it as sequestration so that is why it will present like a patch a opacity it will present like an opacity when it is infected okay so uh, that is about sequestration someone summer i think who had asked the difference between ce ct and ct angio so summer wants to know what is the difference between ce ct and ct angio yes can someone tell me what is the difference between ce ct and ct angio vessel contrast so formal parts in both the vessels look white or in one the vessel looks white the one the vessel looks black what is the difference basically see 
uh, in CT scan or in MRI, whenever we give contrast, how do we give contrast in CECT? Is it intravenous or is it intra arterial? Intravenous. In CT angio, how do we give the contrast? I'm so sorry for the background noise. I'm really, really sorry. But background music whenever I used to study, I always used to have earphones, the music on, and I think that's what is happening. In five minutes, it shall be okay. Sanjana says uh, directly in artery. No. So guys, remember, even in CT angio, we give the contrast intravenous. We give the contrast intravenous. We don't give intra-arterial contrast at all. When you give intra-arterial contrast, it's a huge procedure. You know, puncturing the artery or usme catheter dalna, contrast dalna, it's a big thing. Just... All right. So, so in that case, remember that intra arterial contrast is not an easy procedure. You know, what is the technique that we use for intra arterial contrast? What is the technique that we use for intra arterial contrast? Right. Seldinger technique. Hum Seldinger technique karte hai. So, artery has a huge pressure. The pressure is high. You will have high chances of your hemorrhage. You will have chances of causing a uh, dissection, arterial dissection, aneurysm. Sab kuch ho sakta hai. Vein mein, it's a low pressure. Usme aap, hum IV catheter to aram se dalte hai. So we, diagnostic radiologists, we don't take much risk. We give only intravenous contrast. We don't give intra-arterial contrast at all. Intra-arterial is used in your interventional radiology. So radiologists uh, who are into intervention, they will give intra-arterial contrast so remember the intra arterial contrast is used in which angiography which angiography do we give intra arterial contrast yes dsa digital subtraction angiography or catheter angiography in that we put the catheter so in both we give intravenous contrast cect also and ct angio also the difference is in CT angio, we give a higher dose of contrast, same, iodinated contrast, and we give at a faster rate. We give a higher dose and we give at a faster rate. All right. So that is the only difference. Otherwise, the procedure is the same. We give intravenous contrast only. And you take the images when your contrast is in the vessel. Okay. So on the console, the system that we have for, you know, doing the CT scans, we have that option of choosing okay, when do you want to start taking the images. So we start taking the images. For example, if I am doing, I can do CT aotogram, right? I can do CT aotogram. I can do CT pulmonary angiogram based on what I want to look at, which vessel I want to look at. So if I'm doing CT pulmonary angio, I want the contrast to be in the pulmonary artery, the maximum contrast in pulmonary artery. We know the pulmonary artery is like this on CT scan. So we put a threshold, you know, is major contrast aiga, then you start taking the images. So this is all computerized. Okay, it's all computerized. So that is the only difference between CECT and CT angio. So if in your exam, you don't have an option of CT angiography, you can go with CECT. Okay, you can go with CECT. All right. Coronary angiography is intra-arterial. You know, in coronary angiography, we can give radial artery commonly used karte hai in coronary. Otherwise, for rest of the angiographies, we prefer femoral arterial route, femoral artery route. All right. Right. So then uh, where were we basically? Yeah, we were at CECT. So even in your pulmonary embolism ka question, if they ask you, what is the investigation of choice in a patient of pulmonary embolism? What will be the answer? What is the answer to that? What is the investigation of choice? Yes. 
what is the investigation of choice in the patient of pulmonary embolism ct angio ct pulmonary angio if you don't have ct pulmonary angio in your options Yes. I'm so sorry guys for that background noise. There was too much noise, too many kids at the place. So it's bound to happen. I hope all of you will understand that. And I have tried. Surasa chillate I hu. I hope Surasa asar hoga. Nay, Kaira to hai, but Kaira ke saath or bhi cousins hai. So we sisters are here, unke kids. So there are too many kids in the home. So it's going to be there. I'm sorry for that. All right. So uh, yes. And. Uh, उसके बाद हाँ हम कहा थे सीटी पल्मनरी एनजीओ तो सीटी पल्मनरी एनजीओ और सीई सी टी ठीक है सीई सी टी ये हम ऑप्शन चूज कर सकते हैं इफ यू गेट इन योर एग्जाम ठीक है तो उसके बाद लेट अस गो टू द नेक्स्ट वन द नेक्स्ट वन हियर और राइट एनी वन सो दिस इज अ न्यू साइन हियर विच वी हैव नॉट सीन इवन इन आर प्लस कोर्सेज एनी टाइम सो कैन एनी वन टेल मी वॉट साइन इज दिस What sign is this? So Chandan is thinking that previously we have last image pulmonary embolism. देखा तो ये भी pulmonary embolism का होगा? नहीं है pulmonary embolism का नहीं है. Yes, Venkat Nikhil, Doctor Ajay, you are right. This is your CT CT angiogram sign. ठीक है? This is your CT angiogram sign. Now, what is a CT angiogram sign? Again, this is a contrast and on CT scan, you can see it's a white aorta here. You have the pulmonary artery here, right? You have the ascending aorta. You have the superior vena cava. Now, this is an abnormal area of the lung. Okay, we see the abnormal area of the lung, opacification in the lung, and you can see that through that opacification, there is a vessel which you can see. So basically, it's like in the gray color opacification you see the white vessel going so that is a ct angiogram sign now ct angiogram sign can be seen in any condition basically which can cause lung opacification which can cause lung opacification previously it was thought to be specific for can someone tell me previously it was thought to be specific for what which lung cancer presents like consolidation absolutely right your bronco alveolar carcinoma your bronco alveolar carcinoma very very important point for bronco alveolar carcinoma is it presents like a consolidation why does it present like consolidation why does it be, why does it behave differently from the rest of the cancers the lung cancers What is the difference in the growth pattern? What is the difference in the growth pattern of bronchoalveolar carcinoma and the other lung cancers? Yes, it spreads along the walls of the alveoli. Absolutely right. Not the bronchial spread. Okay. क्या नाम बोलते हैं उसको? What name? Absolutely right. So please remember the term used. You have read in pathology. It is lepidic growth. So very very important question in pathology. Which cancer shows lepidic pattern of growth is bronchoalveolar carcinoma. What is lepidic pattern? It will go from one alveoli to the other alveoli. It will spread like a consolidation. Okay. So lepidic pattern of growth होता है. That is why it presents like a consolidation. So always, you know, we have faced so many times this clinical scenario. So we have an elderly patient. CT pain. We first thought it's consolidation. we gave antibiotics but in spite of giving antibiotics there is no resolution in the consolidation thoda bhi size change nahi hua hai 
So that is when we start thinking of malignancy, bronchoalveolar carcinoma. So remember that in your clinical practice, you will face the scenario. So you should, that's why remember this, that it will be like a consolidation, which does not resolve with antibiotics. This is an important clue for your bronchoalveolar carcinoma rather than thinking ki bhai, you know antibiotic resistance hoga, respond nahi kiya. you should also think of malignancy okay uh, so this is a clinical vignette that you should always remember in your practice so especially in an elderly patient especially in an elderly patient because we know malignancies are more common there so consolidation which does not resolve now what happens when i do a pet scan whenever we think of cancer ticket is it malignant or is it not malignant the investigation we think of okay, let's do pet ct now rather than doing pet scan we do pet ct combined pet ct we think of doing that will pet ct help in a patient of bronchoalveolar carcinoma no why no manisha why no why will it not help why will it not help yes so your bronchoalveolar carcinoma is it a low grade or a high grade it's a low grade malignancy and we know the low grade malignancies are the ones which do not have much of your glucose receptors which take up fdg in your pet the fdg pet that is why they do not take up fdg they are not fdg avid okay that is why you will miss you know then again you will feel you know it is a case of consolidation which has antibiotic resistance that is why it is not responding you might give another antibiotic but still you will see that it's not responding so remember pet ct will not have much role then what will be the uh, what will be the best investigation in that case how will you approach that case then how will you approach that case then absolutely right so the best, the gold standard for any mass, any space occupying lesion you see anywhere, the gold standard is biopsy. Okay, the gold standard is biopsy. Okay, it will give you the final diagnosis. Okay, so remember this about bronchoalveolar carcinoma. So the CT angiogram sign earlier was said to be specific for bronchoalveolar carcinoma, but then it was found in many other cases that if pneumonia bhi hoga, to bhi dik sakta hai. So basically you will see a vessel in the area of opacification. That is what is CT angiogram sign. All right. Let us go to the next one. Next one. So you have the arrow marked here. You have the arrow marked here. What structure is this? Is it a vessel or is it a bronchus? Is it a vessel or is it a bronchus? It's a bronchus, right? Why it's a bronchus? Because it is black air containing. It is black air containing, so it's a bronchus. So this is this is your uh, not the air bronchogram sign. This is not the air bronchogram sign. This is your this is your dark bronchus sign. This is known as dark bronchus sign now let me tell you the difference between air bronchogram and your dark bronchus sign so this dark bronchus sign came into play it was discovered when you know especially in patients of pcp okay what is pcp your pneumonia the pneumocystis pneumonia seen in your immunocompromised patients what is the finding in CT scan and PCP pneumonia that you should keep in mind always from your MCQ point of view as well? What do they give you? Nein. CT, CT mein kya rahega? Ek to reticular hai, uske pehle, in the initial stage, very good Gazalanda, that is the ground glass opacities. That is the ground glass opacities, right? And then you can get reticular opacities. So ground glass opacities. Now tell me the next question is, what is the difference between ground glass opacity versus consolidation? What is the difference between the two? How do you differentiate whether this is ground glass or whether this is consolidation? Yes. How do you differentiate between the two on a CD scan? 
so guys if i have uh, if you are you know planning to take up radiology in future all these points will help you in your residency as well honestly i i shall be very honest with you i didn't know all these signs when i was appearing for my entrance mujhe kuch nahi aata tha radiology because we did not have any image based questions i i'll be very honest with you i never even knew ki is this a ct scan or is it a mri you guys are you know much much better than me you know everything is it a contrast it's a non contrast a ct or is mri mujhe nahi pata tha you are even understanding now ki what is ground glass and what is your consolidation so you guys are right in ground glass opacity what will happen is there will be a area of haziness theek hai the lung will not be completely black but through that haziness you would be able to see the vessels theek hai you would be able to see the vessels while in consolidation what happens it is very dark it is completely opacified okay it is completely opacified and you are not able to see the vessels going through it the vessels which you are able to see in ground glass you won't be able to see in consolidation that is how we define the terms so here you have vessels are visible here you don't have vessels which are visible so many times you know when in the initial stage of ground glass opacity your ct chest might look very normal when you are confused ki bhai ground glass hai ki nahi hai ya ye normal hai that is when this dark bronchus sign comes into play so if your bronchus is standing out in a ct scan as compared to the rest of the lung that means there is ground glass opacity now look at this ct scan okay in this ct scan look at this bronchus look at this black bronchus which you are seeing you can see that this bronchus is standing out if it was a normal lung your rest of the lung parenchyma will also be as black as the bronchus but here you are seeing that the bronchus is standing out so that helps you to understand ki bhai lung ka density has increased that means there is ground glass opacity that is why this black bronchus is standing out so your dark bronchus sign is basically seen when when you have ground glass opacity while your air bronchogram sign is defined not for your ground glass opacity but for consolidation it is defined for consolidation so another point to be added here we talk of dark bronchus sign theek hai here we talk of dark bronchus sign and here we talk of air bronchogram sign basically concept same hai dono ka in the background opacification the bronchi stand out just that someone discovered this in ground glass opacity called it dark bronchus sign the other person did it in consolidation called it air bronchogram sign all right so remember this is your dark bronchus sign when your bronchi stand out in the background of ground glass opacity in pcp pneumonia it's a important sign theek hai clear with everyone any doubts up till now any doubts up till now just give me a quick thumbs up so that i know all of you are understanding the stuff right good now let us go to the next one now this might be a bit difficult but you all have read this uh, uh, you might have seen that uh, let me put a arrow then it will become easy you have to identify the sign here the arrow is here okay what sign is this anyone kyun western mark ke piche pade ho silavet sign so dr ajay is right let me see what all you have answered okay what all you have answered left sicial sign is the right answer let me write it down here so the sign which you see here is the left sicial sign where do you see the jug handle sign someone answered jug handle akanksha jug handle where have we di uh, dis uh, discussed yes so your jug handle sign like the handle of the jug you have your prominent pulmonary artery which is seen in your pulmonary hypertension so you have the prominent pulmonary artery which gives the jug handle appearance right so that is jug handle and this is luft sichel now what do you mean by luft sichel it's a air luft means air sichel means sickle so you have this let me zoom this image so that you can see better here 
दिस ब्लैक कलर यू नो दिस ब्लैक कलर ये जो आप देख रहे हो दैट्स अ ब्लैक कलर सिकल शेप्ड एयर विच इज सराउंडिंग द एटा विच इज सराउंडिंग द एटा सो दिस इज द ब्लैक कलर सिकल शेप्ड एयर सराउंडिंग द एटा दैट इज योर लिफ्ट सिशल साइन यू ऑल आर राइट इट इज सीन इन योर लोअर लोक कोलैप्स और दर लोक कोलैप्स left upper lobe collapse it is seen in left upper lobe collapse the mnemonics we have discussed this in plus class lu is your left upper lobe so lift sigil is seen in your left upper lobe collapse okay now what is this lateral radiograph showing what is this lateral radiograph showing and why do you get this lift sigil sign why do you get this lift sigil sign so you can see here basically जब आपका लेफ्ट लंग है ये आपका लेफ्ट लंग है दूसरा कलर लेते हैं ठीक है लेफ्ट लंग हैज ओनली वन फिशर व्हाट फिशर इज दैट द ऑब्लिक फिशर ओके दैट्स द ऑब्लिक फिशर यू डोंट हैव हॉरिजॉन्टल फिशर ऑन द लेफ्ट साइड सो दिस इज द अपर लोब दिस इज द लोअर लोब यू हैव अ टंग लाइक थिंग योर लिंगुला विच इज अ पार्ट ऑफ द अपर लोब लिंगुला इज अ पार्ट ऑफ द अपर लोब सो वेन यू हैव कोलैप्स ऑफ द लेफ्ट अपर लोब so we know that there will be compensatory hyperinflation of the lower lobe to aapka wo compensate karega so when you have upper lobe ka collapse so lower lobe hyperinflate karega where will this oblique fissure go when you have upper lobe collapse will it go up or will it go down where will the oblique fissure go right the oblique fissure will go up okay the oblique fissure will go up medially or laterally where will it go will it go medially or laterally medially ja raha hai so basically what happens your fissure from oblique now it goes either and from oblique it tends to become more vertical okay it tends to become more vertical and you have this hyperinflation of the lower lobe so in this lateral radiograph what do you see ye jo aap dekh rahe ho ye marking और उसके आगे जो आप पार्ट देख रहे हो दिस इज योर लेफ्ट अपर लोब कोलैप्स दिस इज योर लेफ्ट अपर लोब कोलैप्स कोलैप्स इज व्हाइट इन कलर और ब्लैक इन कलर कोलैप्स इज व्हाइट और कोलैप्स इज ब्लैक व्हाइट और ब्लैक एब्सोल्युटली राइट यू आर रिमूविंग द एयर यू आर रिमूविंग द ब्लैक पार्ट so collapse is white in color so this white color area that you are seeing is the collapse left upper lobe this is the fissure which is between the upper lobe and the lower lobe that is the oblique fissure you can see it has gone up and anteriorly and this is the hyper inflated left lower lobe this entire thing which you are seeing is the hyper inflated left lower lobe all right so that was about your Lift sigil sign. In our plus class in respiratory radiology, we have seen the CT image as well. So you will have the aorta, ठीक है? Arch of aorta ऐसा होता है. और उसके surrounding आपको ये दिखेगा कि आपका lower lobe आ रहा है. That's the hyper inflated left lower lobe, which causes that air appearance, the sickle of air appearance in the left upper lobe collapse. All right. So that is the lift sigil sign. Next one, what sign is this? what sign is this yes golden s sign golden s sign why is it called the golden s sign why is it called the golden s sign anyone why is it called the golden s golden is the name of the person who discovered this sign okay it is not ki ha ye suddenly it was a sign which came like a gold no it is the name of the person so it is basically an eponymous sign it is after the person golden that is the golden s sign or the reverse golden s sign which is seen in your right upper lobe collapse left upper lobe mein lift sigil right upper lobe collapse when the collapse is due to mass when the collapse is due to mass then you get this sign so what do you see here so the right lung has two fissures it has a horizontal fissure it has a oblique fissure okay so when you have the right upper lobe collapse your horizontal fissure goes up so your horizontal fissure goes up why don't i call it a normal right upper lobe collapse why did we specifically mention that it has to be due to a mass 
what difference will you see in the appearance when the collapse is not due to mass when the collapse is due to mass what difference will you see right so fissure will move in both the collapse because collapse pulls the structure the difference will be the s shape will not be there absolutely right so when the collapse is not due to mass and when the collapse is due to mass when you get collapse the fissure should move up so from the horizontal the fissure moves up so your fissure will go like this this will be the shape of the fissure when you have collapse without a mass when you have a mass which is causing the collapse when you have a mass which is causing the collapse so this fissure when it is trying to go up it goes up like this but because of the mass it is pushed down the mass is pushing the fissure down that is why you get this s shape that is why you get this s shape so the mass causes the bulging down types of appearance so that is the s shape so that is why we specifically mentioned it has to be due to a mass which is pushing down on the fissure and you can see this appearance here of the fissure this is the fissure which is like a s shape now in this ct scan is it a contrast or is it a non contrast is it a contrast or non contrast contrast right it's a contrast enhanced ct here what you see is the descending aorta white this part which you see here this is the collapse lung and look at the fissure ka shape okay this is the fissure which has gone like a s shape all right so this image all of us are seeing for the first time as well right so ye jo aapko fissure ka shape dikh raha hai this is the s shape of the fissure this is the s shape of the fissure this part which you see is the collapse this is the collapse lung you have a mass here which is causing the bulging down of the fissure okay so that is the golden s sign that is the golden s sign yes so golden s and reverse golden s sign they mean the same thing because the shape which you see here the shape which you see here is ulta of a normal s you have the reverse of the normal s so this they both mean the same golden s and the reverse golden s all right next one anyone what sign are we seeing here what sign are we seeing here क्यों पालास के पीछे पड़े हो फॉर द स्टार्टिंग ऑफ द सेशन इट्स नॉट पालास साइन यस देर इज अ ट्रकियल पुल ठीक है देर इज डिविएशन ऑफ ट्रकिया एब्सोल्युटली राइट सो लेट अस डी कोड दिस रेडियोग्राफ ओके लेट अस डी कोड दिस रेडियोग्राफ हियर नाउ व्हाट इज हैपनिंग द स्ट्राइकिंग थिंग दैट यू नो व्हेन यू सी दिस x ray now when you know all of you will see this radiograph very frequently in your practice because we'll come to the diagnosis you have the trachea you can see obviously that it is it is deviated towards the right side or the left side it is deviated to the right side or the left side right side okay so whenever you see that the trachea is deviated or any structure whenever it is deviated it could be because of the push or it could be because of the pull so you need to decide that next ki ye push ki wajah se hai ki ye pull ki wajah se hai if it is because of the push that means the pathology has to be on the left side if it is due to pull that means the pathology is on the right side so tell me where do you think is the pathology the right side or the left side is it the right side or the left side which side is looking abnormal which side is looking abnormal here so i see a confusion there as well so your lungs the normal lungs they should be black theek hai they should be black they should have the vascular markings this part of the lung this is the part of the lung which you see is white okay so this is the lung the right upper zone which is not normal that is white now whenever you have white lung what do we think of in a clinical practice commonly we think of consolidation or we think of collapse theek hai how do we differentiate consolidation from collapse how do we differentiate consolidation from collapse 
based on the shift of these structures based on the shift of these structures consolidation where is the shift sabha where is the shift in consolidation consolidation there is no shift there is no shift in consolidation very very important medicine practical mein bhi viva mein hamesha puchte hain consolidation is just replacing the air with something else so the volume remains the same so there is no push there is no pull collapse mein there is a volume loss so it pulls the structures so in collapse you have a pull that is same side shift you have same side shift okay so now what do you think it is uh, is it a consolidation or is it a collapse what do you think is it a consolidation or is it a collapse it's a collapse because the trachea is pulled that if it would have been a consolidation the trachea would have been in the center okay the trachea would have been in the center so this is a collapse collapse we use the other terms it could be atelectasis or even fibrosis because fibrosis also pulls the structures right so yes this is a right upper zone main collapse here which is pulling the trachea and because of that this is the sign i was talking of in this image this sign you have to focus on look at the diaphragm the left diaphragm look at the right diaphragm you can see something like this coming from the right diaphragm you can see something coming out from the right diaphragm so this sign is called as this is called as very good annapurna so this is like a peak this is like a peak which you see this peak is adjacent to the diaphragm it is adjacent to the diaphragm so what can we call it consa sophisticated medical term can we use for it adjacent to the diaphragm and it's a peak so this sign is called as very good it is called as juxta phrenic peak sign it is called as juxta phrenic peak sign you can decode the term near the diaphragm there is a peak or it is also called as diaphragmatic or it is also called as diaphragmatic tenting tenting ye tent ke jaise dikh raha hai diaphragmatic tenting so the upper lobe collapses it causes a pull on the diaphragm as well so you see this diaphragmatic tenting or juxta phrenic peak sign so this sign is seen commonly in your upper lobe collapse and sometimes in the middle lobe collapse as well theek hai so that is the sign that we were talking about the juxta phrenic peak sign also can you see the difference between the volumes of the two lungs look at the volumes the right lung volume is less because of the collapse the left lung volume is more because of the hyperinflated left lung right you can see that the other important sign of collapse which you can see here look at the crowding of the ribs these are the ribs look at how the ribs are crowded and look at how the ribs are spread out in this lung so that is your that is your uh, right lung ka upper mein collapse uh, left lung so of course gazal nanda your heart also shifts basically it is not only the tracheal shift it is the mediastinal shift which happens theek okay? hai so you have the lung you have the lung beech mein you have the mediastinum you have the heart you have the trachea esophagus in the mediastinum so if you have right lung collapse pura mediastinum shift hoga right mein if there is left lung collapse pura mediastinum shift hoga left side mein so the trachea along with the heart both of them shift all right is the left lung normal left lung mein i can only see the prominent vascular markings otherwise the left lung looks normal so we can only see this white white markings which are more so we will just call it prominent vascular markings nothing else okay so everyone clear with this concept the juxta phrenic peak sign everyone clear with this so it is seen in collapse so what are signs we have seen in collapse left upper lobe what is the sign left upper lobe what is the sign lobe sessile sign right upper lobe due to mass what is the sign golden s sign and you have the juxta phrenic peak sign which is seen in upper lobe or middle lobe collapse all right now let us go to the next one i'll put a arrow for you to make things easy for you this is the arrow here okay 
what sign is this? So Ajay is very quick. Absolutely right. That is your chilladity sign. Okay? That is the chilladity sign. So suppose you get this image in your exam and they tell you that a patient presented with abdominal pain. So abdominal radiograph was done and this is what you see. And in the options, you have the options as pneumoperitoneum. What is the diagnosis? Pneumoperitoneum. You have the option which is chilarditi sign. And you have the third option which is chilarditi syndrome. Chilarditi sign, chilarditi syndrome. What do you think will be the answer? You get this radiograph in the exam. So I can see the confusion. Majority of you are answering it is C. Some of you are answering it is B. So basically we need to understand the difference between pneumoperitoneum, chilarditi sign and chilarditi syndrome. Okay. So pneumoperitoneum as we know is air in the peritoneum. It's a free air that is outside the bowel. So that free air will not have any bowel markings. No hostrations will be seen because it's a free air. Why? What is the chilarditis? What happens in chilarditis basically? So in between the diaphragm and the liver, you get a colonic loop which is interposed. So in between the diaphragm and the liver, you have the colonic loop which is interposed. So that is what you see in chilarditis. So in chilarditis, will you see the bowel markings, the hostrations? Will you see the hostrations in chilarditis? Yes, because it is a bowel loop. So it is a colon. So it has hostrations. While in your pneumoperitoneum, there would be no hostrations. While in pneumoperitoneum, there would be no hostrations. That is how we differentiate. So now we have differentiated between pneumoperitoneum and chilarditis. Now what is the difference between chilarditis sign and chilarditis syndrome? Yes, can anyone tell me what is the difference between the two? What is the difference between the two, the chilarditi sign? Absolutely right. So in chilarditi syndrome, the patient is symptomatic. The patient is symptomatic. That means the patient has pain. Why in chilarditi sign? It's just a sign which is present on the radiograph. There are no symptoms. So the patient is asymptomatic. So if you have a patient complaining of pain and you don't see any other cause, then it is chilarditi syndrome. Okay. So in the question, I had mentioned that a patient has presented with abdominal pain and this is what we see. So that is why your chilarditi sign is out because it is asymptomatic. Baki bachta hai aapka pneumoperitoneum and syndrome. Okay. So here below the diaphragm, we are seeing the air. But we are also seeing this markings, the lines in the air. So these are the hostrations and that is why this is your chilarditis. If asymptomatic, if asymptomatic, then chilarditis sign. If symptomatic, then chilarditis syndrome. Pneumoperitoneum, there would be no hostrations. Right? Pneumoperitoneum, there would be no hostrations. Clear with everyone? So how do we differentiate? So, uh, how to differentiate from subphrenic abscess, okay? So, Tahir, radiology is not only about, you know, the images or the photography part of it. You have to correlate with the, uh, you have to correlate with the clinical uh, scenario. You will have patient coming with, you know, something like a swelling. There would be fever. Abscess always has fever. Plus, abscess has pus in it. Okay, abscess has pus in it. So you will not see only air. There would be pus. That means fluid as well in your subphrenic abscess. And generally, your subphrenic abscess, your subphrenic abscess over, you will see a collection like this. Collection of the fluid head. So it will be white colored. Okay, it would be white colored. So there would be opacity, right? And subphrenic abscess also, what will it do to the diaphragm? What will it do to the diaphragm? It will push the diaphragm up. So it's an important cause of your diaphragmatic 
diaphragmatic elevation right there would be diaphragmatic elevation so many things together lead to the diagnosis the clinical history is very very important along with radiology and your lab investigations everything together comes into play right so this is your chilarditi sign or chilarditi syndrome let us go to the next one now tell me what investigation is this what investigation is this ct scan non contrast so whenever you answer ct tell me is it non contrast or contrast non contrast or contrast it's a non contrast ct you see the white bones you see the white bones so it's a ct scan you see the aorta is gray colored it is not white so it's a non contrast ct what structure is this on non contrast ct what structure is this on non contrast ct absolutely right it is spleen okay it is spleen uske baad what structure is this on the ct scan what structure is this absolutely right this is liver and what is this structure here what is this structure here so uh yes i can see the confusion between stomach and pancreas this is your stomach theek hai this is the stomach you can see like you know yahan se jaise aayega esophagus jaise ye aapka stomach ja raha hai idhar this is a stomach containing air this is the stomach all right now can someone tell me what what abnormal thing do you see here what abnormal thing do you see here what is this structure here what is this structure here so uh, saba will i call it above the liver or should i call it anterior to liver should i call it above the liver or anterior so it's a axial image axial when you talk in terms of anterior and posterior above and below will come in your what plane in the other plane the coronal or the sagittal plane all right so anterior to liver what are you seeing what do you think what structure is this absolutely right this is a colon this is a bowel loop this is colon and you can see that liver ke anterior ideally you should have not seen anything liver should be the anterior most this is the diaphragm ka part so you have diaphragm or liver ke beech mein colon which is coming so this is the chilarditi sign on ct scan up till now we have been seeing chilarditis on the radiograph this is the ct correlate of your chilarditi sign clear with everyone so any time if you get the image you should be able to identify this okay you should be able to identify this next dekhte hain i'll put a arrow here i'll put a arrow here tell me what sign do you see here anyone what sign are we seeing here डॉक्टर अजय वेरी वेरी क्लोज ऑप्शन में आएगा तो आई एम श्योर यू गेट इट राइट इट इज हॉली लीव साइन राइट दिस इज हॉली लीव साइन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन आर रेडियोलॉजी प्लस कोर्सेज एज वेल हॉली लीव साइन इज सीन इन एज बेस्टॉसिस इट इज सीन इन एज बेस्टॉसिस सो वॉट इज अ हॉली लीव साइन सो दिस इेग्युलर यू नो दिस ओपेसिटीज विच यू आर सीन दीज आर योर इेग्युलर प्लूरल प्लाक्स these are the plural plaques which are classical in your asbestosis so when you see this plural plaques on face that is how they look like they look like a holly leaf okay they look like a holly leaf so that is your holly leaf sign important question the plural plaques no robinson where do we see the ginkgo leaf sign so uh i i should have put the image how is it different how does a ginkgo leaf look like and how does the holly leaf looks like yes the ginkgo leaf sign is seen in subcutaneous emphysema we have that image as well we'll come to that that is seen in subcutaneous emphysema we'll come to that so pleural plaques and asbestosis it affects what is it in the parietal pleura is it in the visceral pleura or is it in both parietal and visceral so formal pants knows this it is in the parietal pleura very important point please remember parietal pleura pe hote hain 
ठीक है मोस्ट कॉमनली यू विल सी लाइक हियर यू आर सीइंग द कैल्सिफिकेशंस ऑन द डायफ्रोमेटिक प्लूरा एज वेल सो यू विल सी ऑन द डायफ्राम द वाइट एरियाज सो रिमेंबर दिस इज योर हॉली लीव साइन व्हिच इज प्लूरल प्लाक्स व्हिच इज सीन इन एस्बेस्टोसिस दिस इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट इमेज एंड कैन बी आस्क्ड इन योर एग्जाम ऑल राइट एस्बेस्टोसिस यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ऑक्युपेशनल लंग डिजीज इट इज सो द इंपॉर्टेंट द शिपिंग इंडस्ट्री माइनिंग इंडस्ट्री ये सब में आपके प्लम्बिज्म उसमें एस्बेस्टोसिस इंपॉर्टेंट है ठीक है एब्सोल्युटली राइट यू हैड अ क्वेश्चन इन योर आईएनआईसीटी रिसेंटली एस्बेस्टोसिस इट अफेक्ट्स द बेस ऑफ द लंग राइट सो इट अफेक्ट्स द लोअर लोब्स मोर इट अफेक्ट्स द लोअर लोब्स मोर व्हिच ऑक्युपेशनल लंग डिजीज अफेक्ट्स द अपर लोब्स मोर एंड लुक्स वेरी सिमिलर टू ट्यूबरक्यूलोसिस सिलिकोसिस राइट सिलिकोसिस इज इन द अपर लोब similar to tuberculosis that is why you have a term silico tuberculosis okay it presents very similar to your tuberculosis all right so that is your holly leaf sign holly leaf sign what sign do we see here what sign do we see here very good you guys are smart very very good it is your continuous diaphragm sign it is the continuous diaphragm sign so this is where you see you have this air yahan pe uh, diaphragm ke center part ke waha and the diaphragm looks continuous then so that is your continuous diaphragm sign tell me where do you see continuous diaphragm sign is it only in pneumomedia stenosis is it only in pneumomedia stenosis no where else pneumomedia stenosis pneumoperitoneum and and what other pneumo yahan pe aur kya hai diaphragm ke center ke sath mein aur kya hai heart hai to pneumopericardium pneumopericardium peritoneum hai pneumoperitoneum ye media stenosis pura hai esophagus bhi aata hai isme sab aata hai so pneumomedia stenosis so whatever is related to the center of your diaphragm and which can cause air accumulation so basically what happens is you have the diaphragm and you have the heart sitting on the central part of the diaphragm so that is why this heart obscures your it obscures the central part of the diaphragm we don't see the center part of diaphragm normally we see the right hemi diaphragm the left hemi diaphragm but now if i separate this heart from the diaphragm i separate this heart i separate it with what i separate it with air i put the air in between the two so now i'll be able to see this diaphragm continuously previously normally i can't see the diaphragm continuous i see the right i see the left this part i cannot see but when there is this air in between the heart and diaphragm then i would be able to see the center part of diaphragm so that is why it is seen in pneumopericardium the air could be just surrounding the heart or the air could be surrounding the entire mediastinum it could be surrounding the aorta the esophagus everything so pneumomediastinum so it is seen in pneumomediastinum it is seen in pneumopericardium the other thing we can see the diaphragm agar yahan pe air aa gayi pneumoperitoneum okay it is sometimes also mentioned in pneumoperitoneum it is not seen in pneumothorax okay so remember it's not seen in pneumothorax it is seen in rest of the pneumos so this is your continuous diaphragm sign this is your continuous diaphragm sign so can you tell me other important signs in pneumomediastinum can you tell me other important signs in pneumomediastinum yes neclerios v sign aur kaun sa sign hota hai akanksha ajay football sign ka hota hai football where do you see this ball what part in a body is like a ball the abdomen right so when you have air in the abdomen so football sign is pneumoperitoneum it is pneumoperitoneum dr moki your thymic sail sign theek hai jo aapka thymic sail sign hai it's the normal sail like appearance of the thymus theek hai so thymic sail sign is normal it is the spinnaker sail sign which is abnormal it is the spinnaker sail sign 
when the thymus gets separated because of the air that is what you get in pneumomedia sinica right so you get the neclerius v sign the spindaker sail sign or the angel wing sign the ring around artery tubular artery all of these we have discussed right in the plus class so that is about pneumomedia sinica which will be the best investigation for pneumomedia sinica what will be the best investigation ct scan whenever there is air ct scan is the best not ultrasound not mri so ct scan would be the best investigation okay what sign do we see here in this area of opacification uh, not very very clear i would agree i could have got a better image but theek hai ha ek hai aapka silavit sign very good sanjana bat wing theek hai so a bat has one wing or a bat has two wings you are going to get a bat has two wings so you are going to see the wing like appearance in both the areas if it would have been bilateral symmetrical then we could have called it the bat wing sign theek hai if you could have seen the opacification here as well compare this white area compare with this black area they are not symmetrical so this is not bat wing theek hai is that clear sanjana yes it is allowing the right heart border so it is in the right middle lobe so it is your silavet sign plus you see this let me zoom this image theek okay. hai so in this area of opacification we can see some black black areas some black black areas which suggest your air bronchogram sign theek okay. hai so if you see the black areas within this uh, within this consolidation basically the opacity then it is your air bronchogram sign and air bronchogram sign is a sign of air bronchogram sign is a sign of yes as i told you it's not a very good image i have shown you better images in my class courses i got a bad image here uh yes it is a sign of your parenchymal lung disease it's a sign which helps you to differentiate parenchymal disease from extra parenchymal or pleural disease because in the pleural disease you will not get the bronchogram bronchi do not go into the pleura so you will see only in parenchymal pathologies it is seen in consolidation highline membrane disease pulmonary edema because all of them basically cause consolidation jaise and will you see in collapse will you see air bronchogram sign in collapse you will see in collapse also because it's a white area but only when the collapse is a non obstructive collapse what do we mean by non obstructive collapse that means the bronchus of that area is patent only when the bronchus is patent now when i say collapse it is not always due to a obstructive cause ki bhai that area ka bronchus obstruct hua to collapse hua could there be a non obstructive collapse can we get collapse without obstruction of the bronchus absolutely right so compressive or passive atelectasis as we call it so passive atelectasis or passive collapse any you know the common example you will see in your clinical practice what can cause passive atelectasis for example let us say if there is pleural effusion theek okay? hai so or any mass so which is basically compressing the lung so that can cause the collapse of the lung so pleural effusion compressing the lung so that can cause the collapse of the lung yes massive pleural effusion so in that case you know you might see the air bronchogram sign because the bronchus is patent okay because the bronchus is patent so clear with everyone you will see in consolidation highline membrane and your pulmonary edema and collapse so uh, will we see air bronchogram in interstitial lung disease rarely we might see it okay because our medical science is not like mathematics yes or no it is not that common but yes we can see it because your interstitial lung disease then might involve your alveoli as well in the later stages but the most common is your alveolar pathologies which cause your air bronchogram but as i said yes sometimes you might see in interstitial lung disease as well 
but for your interstitial lung disease the most important thing that you should look for for interstitial lung disease is what no not ggo ggos what do ground glass opacities indicate whether the pathology is basically here in the alveoli or in the interstitium it starts with the alveoli matlab alveolitis wala stage when you have alveolitis that will cause ggo interstitial lung disease so in between the alveoli you have the septal thickening the interlobular septal thickening in ct scan in radiograph how is it described that the interstitial pathologies are described as what very correct reticular opacities so whenever you get this term in your question ki reticular opacities are seen they are trying to tell you that it's a interstitial lung disease because reticular matlab line jaisa hai wo interstitium hai when they tell you that there are fluffy opacities cotton wool opacities that means the opacities are fusing together like a cotton wool so from one alveolus to other to other so that is your alveolar pathology all right so you will see reticular opacities honeycombing as you all are saying honeycombing is not seen in all interstitial lung disease honeycombing basically indicates your fibrosis it's a fibrotic stage which is common in your uip pattern theek hai so fibrotic uip wala jo hai ya kabhi kabhi fibrotic nsip mein bhi ho sakta hai theek hai nsip can be non fibrotic or fibrotic in fibrotic nsip or in uip you will see the honey combing pattern which indicates fibrosis all right so that is air bronchogram sign seen in consolidation consolidation could be pulmonary edema hyaline membrane disease pneumonia it could be your bronchoalveolar carcinoma it could be your non obstructive collapse anything what sign did we see in your ground glass opacity per se in the starting of the session what sign did we see ground glass opacity mein very good so that is your dark bronchus sign so in the hazy lung parenchyma you will see the black bronchus which will stand out dark bronchus sign which was first discovered in your pcp pneumonia okay it was first discovered in your pcp pneumonia so that is about air bronchogram sign next dekhte hain let me zoom this image so that you guys will be able to see better i'll put a arrow for you here theek hai what sign do you think is this very good so this is the deep sulcus sign all right this is a deep sulcus sign you can see that the sulcus is going deep like this compare it with this sulcus this sulcus is going deep why is the sulcus going deep because of the air because of the air air in the pleura so right it is pneumothorax pneumothorax it is seen in which radiograph of the pneumothorax the supine radiograph or the erect radiograph where do we see the deep sulcus sign supine radiograph or the erect so remember it is the supine radiograph and where do we take supine radiograph because normally we prefer erect radiograph so where do we take supine radiograph where do we take which patients do we take uh, supine radiograph the bedridden patients so basically your icu patients so i remember during my senior residency i've seen this patient jiska portable chest x ray we do portable chest x rays in the icu we don't ask the patient on venti to come down for x ray we take the portable x ray machine we take the radiograph there and then we saw this deep sulcus sign and we could diagnose pneumothorax based on this deep sulcus sign in the icu patient now icu patient you know pneumothorax what is the common iatrogenic cause what is the common iatrogenic cause of pneumothorax complication of it's a complication of ventilation right your positive pressure ventilation can cause your pneumothorax plus the central line insertion right it's a common complication of central line insertion so these are important causes in our practice we should remember of these to look for 
your uh, pneumothorax all right so this is your deep sulcus sign supine radiograph always see for that and you can also see that so this is the black pneumothorax this is the black pneumothorax it does not have the vascular markings look at this lung look at this lung why is this lung looking more white as compared to your left lung collapse so exactly that is what we were talking about your passive atelectasis theek hai compressive ya passive atelectasis uski wajah se lung collapse ho gaya and you can see a drain the tube here for pneumothorax there's a tube as well put in for pneumothorax all right so that is about pneumothorax the deep sulcus sign yes what sign do we see here let me put the arrows here basically the arrows will help you to identify the sign yes the 1 2 3 sign or the garland sign and i want to introduce a new term here for the sign this sign is also called as remember pawn broker sign so it's the same terminology for your 1 2 3 sign or the garland sign so remember pawn broker sign 1 2 3 or garland sign which is seen in sarcoidosis which is seen in sarcoidosis now sarcoidosis from radiology point of view when should you suspect sarcoidosis when should you suspect sarcoidosis in imaging let's say on x ray on ct scan if you see bilateral very good bilateral symmetrical hilar lymph nodes think of sarcoidosis because it first presents with mediastinal lymph nodes and then it goes to the lung parenchyma as well theek hai and we do the blood test screening test kya kya elevate hota hai sarcoidosis mein kya elevate hota hai yes the ace levels are increased and for your mcqs also remember it's an important cause very good chandan of hypercalcemia it is an important cause of hypercalcemia increased ac levels all of these are seen so bilateral symmetrical hilar lymph nodes also called as potato nodes also called as potato nodes do you remember in the recent respiratory radiology session in the plus course uh, we had seen hrct images what did we talk about sarcoidosis what should you check for in hrct galaxy very good and what else galaxy sign or kya hrct mein kya important you know hallmark hai the catch point if you get in your exam anyone who has attended the recent session in the comprehensive it's actually going on for the 2022 batch but yes you all can attend as well so remember that hrct mein if you see peri fissural nodules if you see peri fissural nodules always think of sarcoidosis it's a important finding peri fissural nodules or basically your peri lymphatic nodules peri fissural nodules important hai sarcoidosis hrcd finding theek hai so for students who had attended respiratory radiology pehle when i had taken uh please watch at least the last session of respiratory radiology i've covered a new part there of hrct some important findings in hrct like the lung cyst like your sarcoidosis crazy pavement wo sab wah cover kiya hai wahan pe dekh lena theek hai because that part i have not covered in the previous courses all right so with every course you know we tend to add some new things uh, so it's always good to watch the sessions at 2x all right so you have the lymph nodes you have the lymph nodes you have the lymph nodes 1 2 3 or the garland triad or 1 2 3 sign or a pawn broker sign why is it called garland sign why is it called garland sign again it is eponymous you know garland we remember it maine session se bataya hai ki garland of lymph nodes ke jaise hum yaad rakhte hain but actually garland is a eponymous term garland ek banda tha jiske piche ye you know naam rakha gaya hai how to differentiate mariana is asking between axial calcification and this sign so mariana of course in your axial calcification as a term says you would see calcification theek okay? hai these lymph nodes only in the later stage will show calcification so that will become your axial calcification 
ठीक है यू शुड सी द वाइट कैल्सिफिकेशन इन द पेरिफ्री ऑफ द लिम्फ नोड्स देन इट वुड बी योर एक्सेल कैल्सिफिकेशन राइट सो नाउ इन द सीटी स्कैन so i want to show you the 1 2 3 sign here okay first identify the structure on the ct what is this what is the structure on the ct chandan bronchus bolenge ki trachea bolenge trachea right it is trachea it's in the center if it was bronchus you will see on the sides yes yeah, a center mein nahi aayega side mein rahenge do dikhenge bronchus dikhenge that's the trachea there if that is a trachea what is this structure here we have discussed in radiology anatomy what is that structure arch of aorta right it's the arch of aorta so this rounded thing which you are seeing here this rounded thing which you are seeing here this is a lymph node this is a lymph node okay trachea ke baju mein will i call it right para tracheal or the left para tracheal lymph node what lymph node is this it's on the right side right midline ke right mein hai so this one is your right para tracheal lymph node okay that's your right para tracheal lymph node now again in this ct it taken at a below level so chandan appreciate here now this is what you will call as a bronchus this is what you would call as a bronchus because it's on the side okay so that's the bronchus there you have the esophagus here this is the aorta here these ones which you are seeing these are your lymph nodes you can see this white areas what do they indicate calcification okay that is the calcification in the lymph nodes so these are bilateral hilar lymph nodes so you have one you have two and you have three so one two three sign on ct scan you have your one two three sign on ct scan right paratracheal right hilar and the left hilar you can see the calcification in the lymph nodes all right next wala dekhte hain i have marked it also for you what sign is this very very important amazing so the sign is your double density sign that's your double density sign or the double hard border sign which is seen in your left atrial enlargement which is seen in mitral stenosis which is seen in mitral stenosis what are the other signs in mitral stenosis mitral stenosis left atrium left auricle bada hota hai straightening of the left heart border a quick review from a plus class what next do you have you have straightening of left heart border what else do you have absolutely right the left bronchus goes up so you get normal carina angle is this the left bronchus goes up by the enlarged atrium so you get splaying of the carina so you get splaying of the carina straightening of the left heart border and you get this double density sign okay double density sign very good formal pants you get the third mogul sign right you get the third mogul sign yes curly b lines are not specific for your left atrial enlargement you will see them when you get left atrial enlargement ki wajah se jab finally your heart is going into failure in heart failure basically you will see the curly b lines okay you will see the curly b lines so this is your double density sign where you will see the left atrium comes on the right side so you get the double right heart border double density sign what murmur do you get in mitral stenosis yes mid diastolic murmur with mid diastolic murmur with pre systolic accentuation so if you get a image we have discussed in the plus course right fmg exam you had a question on two questions on murmur recent fmg exam you will see the murmur between s1 and s2 or s2 and s1 s1 or s2 ke beech mein hoga ya s2 or s1 ke beech mein hoga absolutely right so you will see in between s2 and s1 because that is when you have the diastole so it's a mid diastolic it will start after your opening snap so you get the opening snap after that your murmur starts so you have the mid diastolic murmur you have the mid diastolic murmur with pre systolic accentuation right so aisa aapka 
मरमर होगा इन माइट्रल स्टेनोसिस इन माइट्रल स्टेनोसिस ठीक है अभी हम और क्या देख रहे थे सो इंपॉर्टेंट क्लूज इन योर एग्जाम इफ यू गेट अ इमेज बेस्ड लेफ्ट एट्रियल एनलार्जमेंट check for this prosthetic mitral valve even a question is asked on that this is your prosthetic mitral valve here it's a important clue to tell you that the patient has undergone a valve replacement surgery okay it's very very important third mogul sign the mogul signs i've already discussed in my plus course in the cardiovascular radiology right is me let us see the next sign I'll put an arrow for you. I'll put an arrow for you here. What sign do you think is shown here? Chandan, a uh, regular sign, okay? I agree to you. There is regular sign, but the sign which I want to show you here is. let me let me draw this sign this is a black line which you are seeing this is the diaphragm which is going here what sign is that yes this is your nectarius v sign which is seen in your pneumo media stenum so now look at this look at this nectarius v sign in the ct scan okay so the v shape is like this so this is the diaphragm that you have you will see let me erase this all right so you have the black color air here you have the air here in the you know the left mediastinum lower part that is what forms your nectarius v sign okay that is what forms your nectarius v sign so basically it is seen in your pneumo mediastinum so remember that is your nectarius v sign which is seen in pneumo media stenum okay so this v shape in between the medial part of diaphragm and the lower part of the media stenum on left side you have the nectarius v sign it is surrounding the media stenum so it is seen in pneumo media stenum commonly it is seen in patients of what causes pneumo media stenum what causes pneumo media stenum mallory wistel or the borhaus syndrome or both of them it is your borhaus which is the complete which is a complete tear of esophagus while in mallory wist it's a partial tear so when you have complete tear the air goes out it causes pneumo media stenum what is the triad that we see in borhaus what triad do we see so i try to integrate jump from here to there what triad do we see in borhaus yes the meckler's triad we see the meckler's triad in borhaus syndrome we see the meckler's triad in borhaus syndrome so remember this is your nectarius v sign okay this is your nectarius v sign so i do agree to you that there is regular sign as well which is seen here nine abhi ha you see this area this this one this air is outside your thorax ठीक है वो मीडिया सिनम के भी बाहर है सो दिस इज वेर यू आर सीइंग दिस सर्जिकल एम्फाइसिमा और द सबक्यूटेनियस एम्फाइसिमा बट यू आर नॉट सीइंग द गिंको लीव साइन येट हियर लेट मी सी वेयर वाज दैट इमेज इट इज दिस इमेज वेयर यू आर सीइंग द गिंको लीव साइन आई हैव दिस ब्यूटीफुल वीडियो ऑफ गिंको लीव साइन ऑन माय YouTube चैनल गाइस यू कैन चेक देयर so your ginkgo leaf is something the leaf which has these striations like this okay so in the pectoralis muscle along the fibers of the pectoralis where you see this black colored lines ye jo black lines aapko dikhti hai that one is your ginkgo leaf sign apart from that you are seeing air in this supraclavicular region also so another you know area where you check for subcutaneous emphysema so your ginkgo leaf is basically when you have air along the pectoralis muscle ka fibers and that is what looks like a ginkgo leaf so you have ginkgo leaf sign subcutaneous emphysema and you have your nectarius v sign in your pneumo mediastinum all right so let us quickly revise what all signs we have seen in our today's session there are few more images i'll uh, let you know the next session um 
the next session again as i told you i'm planning to take two sessions uh, your each day today and tomorrow so your next session would be tonight and i know it's going to be late but uh, it is at 11 pm all right guys so tonight 11 pm we will have another session and get ready for your okay <laughs> it's okay uh, nishu i hope with the sessions uh, whether it's one hour, two hour, one and a half hour, it goes in the blink of an eye. I hope that is what is uh, the uh, mission of the session. So, the what I'm going to cover in your... So, what I'm going to cover in today's session, uh, it's going to be late night. So, I want all of you to be awake. That is why I'm planning for a quiz. Okay? 11 p.m. you will have a quiz. So, um... Uh, 11 p.m. quiz mein, we will have basically uh, let us target on whatever topics we have covered up till now in your uh, special classes. So it would be a mixed bag quiz. So it's going to be a reality check, a realization for all of you before you go to bed tonight. Ki hum jitna padh rahe hai, utna are we retaining or not? So please revise all the special classes from wherever you want of whatever I've taken up till now. We will have a quiz today. We will have a quiz tomorrow as well. Okay, we will have the quiz tomorrow as well. So please prepare from whatever sessions I've taken up till now. There are going to be questions from there and it's going to be mixed back. All right. So as I told you, it's going to be mixed back topics. It is going to be mixed back topics. Let us simplify it. Let us simplify it. So tonight, we let us simplify. I'll make your task easy. Today, we will have a quiz on your first year subjects. Take it. Today, we are going to have a quiz on your first year subjects. That is your anatomy, physiology, and biochemistry. Take it. And then tomorrow, 31st, let us first have a quiz on your second year subjects, patho, pharmac, and micro FMT. Those sub combined rega. Tomorrow we have two sessions again. So, uske baad ek aapka first year ka quiz hai aaj, kal second year ka hai. Phir tomorrow is gonna be your third year subjects, which includes your both third minor and third major as well. So, PSM, ENT, Ophthal, Medicine, Surgery, PE, OBGY, sab kuch rehga. Theek hai? So, easy hai for you and you get enough time. So, in the first session tomorrow, second year subjects, Pathopharmac, Micro FMT, and then baad uh, mein third year ka hoga. So all of you, please prepare with your first year subjects, live quiz polls. Absolutely. It is going to be a live quiz, and we will see who wins the game tonight. So have your cup of coffee before you come to the class. I know it is late, but I think it's the best way to keep you all awake rather than passive listening, I will make all of you to think so that none of you fall asleep. Timing of each session is going to be for one and a half hour. It's going to be 90 minutes. Okay? So that is what is the whole thing. And if time permits, I will include like, you know, one, two tables to help you memorize some things if time permits. All right. A bit quickly, we revise the signs that we have seen today. So the first one is your Hampton's hump, pulmonary embolism. Then again, this is your Hampton's hump, pulmonary embolism. You have filling defect in the pulmonary artery, that is embolism. Then what did we see is your CT angiogram sign, previously specific for bronchoalveolar carcinoma, can be seen in pneumonia or any other cause of obesification. Then we saw the dark bronchus sign, which is seen in your ground glass obesity, important in PCP pneumonia. Then we had your left fissure sign, left upper lobe collapse. You see the oblique fissure has gone in the front. That's the collapse lump. This is the hyperinflated left lower lobe. Then we have the golden S sign, right upper lobe collapse due to mass. Golden S sign, right upper lobe collapse. Then we had the juxtaphrenic peak sign or the diaphragmatic tenting sign. Again seen in collapse because of the pull on the diaphragm. So this is going to be a classical image in your patient of fibrotic tuberculosis, upper zone. You will see the fibrosis, trachea pull. You will see this sign. Okay, tuberculosis may be very common. Then we had the chilarity sign, a cause of pseudonemoperitoneum. Syndrome will have pain. Sign does not have any pain. You will see the hostations. And in CT scan, 
यू सी द कोलोनिक लूप इन बिटवीन द डायफ्राम एंड द लिवर ठीक है इंटरपोजिशन then we had the holly leaf sign which is asbestosis the plural plaques in asbestosis continuous diaphragm sign pneumomediastinum pneumoperitoneum pneumopericardium not seen in pneumothorax then we had the air graphogram sign in consolidation which is basically parenchymal versus pleural disease differentiate karne ke liye sign consolidation hyaline membrane disease pulmonary edema and non obstructive lung collapse then we had your deep sulcus sign important in icu patients supine radiograph pneumothorax you will see the deep sulcus because of the air okay because of the air then we had the pond broker sign 1 2 3 or the garden sign which are your mediastinal lymph nodes sarcoidosis cd scan sarcoidosis look for the perifisural nodules very very important perifisural nodules important again a reminder plus subscribers please have a look at the respiratory radiology session in the last part i have discussed your hrcd findings in the ct here you have the right paratracheal lymph node the bilateral calcified hilar lymph nodes sarcoidosis okay that is sarcoidosis double density sign very very important left atrial enlargement mitral stenosis and then we had the neclerios v sign which is seen in your pneumomediastinum neclerios v sign which is seen in pneumomediastinum common cause borhoff syndrome okay it is seen in borhoff syndrome then you have the jimko leaf sign which is seen in subcutaneous emphysema it is seen in subcutaneous emphysema when you have air along the pectoralis muscle okay when you have air along the pectoralis muscle all right so that was about our today session there are few more signs which i have not covered maybe in some other session or uh, in the upcoming ones we'll complete those as well you can take that as a self assessment download the pdf after the session there are these uh, few more images which were there try and answer the questions and if you want any image you are not sure let me know i will cover in the upcoming session theek hai thode aur signs the jo cover karne the but of course because of the time constraint we are not doing it now all right so there are few more images i have shown you theek hai so yes that's all about our today's session i'll see you all again at 11 pm so remember it's a late night quiz on the first year subjects late night quiz on the first year subjects so be awake be alert during the quiz and we'll see who wins the quiz today tomorrow again we will have the sessions and uh, i'll let you know of the uh, timings for tomorrow as well on the telegram group i hope all of you are there on the group if not please stay connected there and i'll keep you posted all right so thank you everyone and i hope to see you all uh, in tonight late night session get all your friends along and see who wins the game it's going to be a fun session at 11 pm tonight i'll share the link uh, soon on the telegram group after the session and uh, uh, you all can register so that you know you get a reminder and you don't fall asleep before the session so you'll get a reminder ki bhai class chalu ho raha hai quiz chalu ho raha hai theek hai so goodbye everyone uh, take care keep studying keep revising and keep winning i'll see you tonight at 11 pm good night